Hello and welcome to the Trading Bell Show. This time round, we are not going to talk about just numbers and the likes, but just veering off a little bit to check some of the concerns, especially for the people who work and the people who actually get them to work. And we're talking about matters employers. And today I'm sitting with uh, Jacqueline Mugo, the Executive Director and CEO at the Federation of Kenya employers and she'll be telling us what are they all about and what are the milestones we are seeing what is our status in terms of when we look at our workforce Jacqueline Mugo, welcome to the show thank you thank you very much it's my pleasure to be on this show excellent thank you so much you know, uh, just for the sake of our viewers, most people probably may be hearing this for the first time, that there is a federation for Kenyan employers. I'd like you to just start by telling us, you know, uh, who you are as a federation and your mandate uh, to Kenyans. The Federation of Kenya Employers mm -hmm. is actually an employers and business member organization. Mm -hmm. We exist to provide a home for employers. Mm -hmm a place where they can get advice, they get support, and they get a voice so that issues affecting employers are communicated to the government mm -hmm. and other stakeholders. So our key role is really to provide a platform for employers to come together. And our membership is open to anybody doing business in Kenya, mm -hmm. whether you are a cooperative, you are a bank, you are a, a company limited by guarantee, you are a church, you're an NGO or a parastatal, mm -hmm. and whether you're big or small, uh, you can join the membership of the Federation of Kenya Employers voluntarily because there is no law that demands that employers join the Federation. But we believe that all good employers are members of the Federation of Kenya Employers. Wow, that's a nice one. You know, sometimes we focus more on the employees and sometimes we can also forget their welfares as well for the employers. That's a great move there. You have been in existence now for 60 years. I'm keen sometimes to also hear from your end. What are some of your key milestones and what have you achieved over these years? Established in 1959 mm -hmm. as the Federation of Kenya Employers, we actually existed for three years before that wow. under a different name. Mm -hmm. And we emerged uh, towards independence in the mid 1950s mm -hmm. when there was the beginning of private sector and some employer-employee uh, relationship for the few Kenyans who okay. are employed. And they were agitating as trade unions for rights, for better pay, for better conditions of work. Mm -hmm. So employers decided to come together mm -hmm. in the mid-1950s so that they could have a platform yeah. on which to air their, uh, their issues. Mm -hmm. But in 1959, we formally became the Federation of Kenya Employers. At that time, we were mainly concerned about labor relations, collective bargaining, resolving disputes, resolving strikes, and looking at terms and conditions of service. But in the last 63 years, yeah. we've actually morphed into an employer and business member organization because there's so many other matters that affect mm -hmm. the workplace, that affect employers, that affect the employer-employee relationship. We have to look at matters trade. We have to look at policies that impact the workplace we have advanced into addressing issues of diversity and inclusion. And all these have meant that we expand our mandate beyond the initial labor relations, but that still remains a core part mm -hmm. of the Federation. So that transformation into a body that handles broader issues has also brought us into a network of employers in the world. First in Africa, because we have a body called um, 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 Business Africa Employers Confederation, which is actually housed here okay. at the Federation of Kenya Employers. Mm -hmm. And I am their Secretary General on a voluntary basis. We have a global body, the International Organization of Employers. I happen to be the Vice President of Employers now, mm -hmm. and we also serve globally. Mm -hmm. And as an employers organization, we've seen us being pushed into a leadership role mm -hmm. in the continent as FKE. We are actually amongst the largest and most uh, successful organization. And uh, we come together as employers in the continent to influence the landscape in which business is done. So that leadership role is something that has emerged over the years. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen really all the corporates that are doing business in this country 
get into the membership of the Federation and have a voice within that. We've uh, succeeded in engaging government on a whole um, arena of issues mm -hmm. and been there when we've seen changes in the labor laws, seen changes in the regulatory environment, mm -hmm. and also pushed for better relationships with, with the union. So over time, I, I could say that the Federation has gotten greater influence mm -hmm. in the Kenyan economy, uh, become the to-go-to voice yeah. on matters employment, okay. and also improved the landscape in which business is done and the terms and conditions of service for the workers okay. in this country. Okay. Interesting you talk about the economy, and we are coming from a very interesting season. Um, you just going back, we are looking at, you know, employers just reeling from the effects of COVID, and we had a lot of people, you know, affected, and some of them mm -hmm. even had to lay off. And we know some of them was, well, were not finding it easy to just, you know, cut off some of their uh, employees. But let's talk about the economic situation that we are in right now. From your perspective, what are the employers that you represent uh, seeing and what are you also seeing as well? Where are we so far? It's been a very difficult season for employers and for Kenyans and indeed the world at large because even prior to COVID-19, we were already seeing distress in the economy and employers were beginning to review their investments, the performance of their enterprises and make tough decisions about staffing levels, about investments into, into new machines, mm -hmm. new equipment, technology, and that kind of thing. So come COVID-19, it found us already in a fairly um, fragile situation. Mm -hmm. So employers are still in that recovery mode. And of course, we know that there are many other factors that have come in. We have the geopolitics and mm -hmm. the war in Ukraine, yeah. which has, amongst other things, pushed up the prices of fuel Absolutely. and crude. Mm -hmm. And that really impacts the price of many, many other inputs. Yeah. So the cost of living is very high mm -hmm. in Kenya, mm -hmm. but there are countries that are sitting at 40% inflation. So we're not the worst, but there is distress in the economy and in the population. That high cost of living and high cost of inputs has also pushed up the cost of doing business. Okay. And we know that when COVID happened, about two million Kenyans lost their jobs. Yeah. And enterprises are also impacted by that. They mm -hmm. also haven't fully recovered. And as the government seeks to try and bring some improvement in the performance of the economy, there are also quite a number of proposals that are being made that are impacting the cost of doing business. So the cost of doing business is fairly high in, in, our, in our region. Mm -hmm. The international trade has been fairly disrupted supply chains are still highly disrupted and so the the drought situation has also not made things easy this combination of factors has put business in a fairly fragile and distressed state and uh, as we look ahead uh, we are seeing the possibilities of a recession because that's what the world is talking about mm -hmm. the projections were that we would grow by about six percent six point seven percent globally to six percent Projections are that that will drop by half in 2022 and slightly lower than that yeah. in 2023. Mm -hmm. And Kenya is part of, of these developments. So the, 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 the scenario, the business scenario is really fairly difficult. Okay. There is hope though because there's a lot that can be done. But as, as matters stand now, we will have to put in place some fairly stringent and innovative measures to be able to help the ordinary person cope, mm -hmm. to help business function, and also to support those who are losing their jobs because we are seeing that yeah. in, the, in the media that this is happening yeah. uh, in many sectors. So that, that's a worry okay. because we already have a very high informal sector, mm -hmm. actually 80% of our jobs, 85% mm -hmm. yeah. of the jobs that we have in this country are in the informal economy, yeah. fairly unregulated, not very well paid and we're going to push more Kenyans mm -hmm. into that. So the structure of our economy itself makes us uh, very fragile okay. because the only 15% falls into the formal sector, mm -hmm. which is increasingly being looked at to finance <laughs> the other 85%. <laughs> so that makes conversations with government sometimes difficult. Yeah. But uh, I believe there is a way we can have better conversations around this okay. as employers and government and workers and other stakeholders 
to see how we can together uh, have a plan that is sustainable uh, right. for the economy. All right, well put. And I am keen to briefly ask you, are there some specific sectors that you've seen that are quite hard hit? You know, as we're talking about this economy and some that are still somehow surviving, because you've mentioned a few here. I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering whether there are some that are quite special in a way by being hit so hard. At the beginning of COVID-19, yeah. everybody was hit hard because mm -hmm. business stops, but stopped. But we know that for tourism, for instance, uh, they were really hard hit. The mm -hmm. hotels closed down, schools oh, yeah. were closed. Mm -hmm. Hospitals, yes, re it remained operational. Mm -hmm. So that impact on the economy was really fairly global. Okay. But we were beginning to see recovery mm -hmm. in the service sector, yeah. in the hospitality sector, mm -hmm. and also even in tourism. Mm -hmm. um, but now, because of these global uh, indicators, yeah. Uh, it continues to be fairly checkered. The agricultural sector, for one, okay. is in uh, very bad shape because mm. of the drought and, and the shortage of food and yeah. the, the problems that we're seeing. The construction sector, for some reason, is, is picking up. Okay. Uh, of course, the IT sector has done fairly well yeah. in this scenario. There mm -hmm. are lots of new business ideas, mm -hmm. new businesses that have come up yeah. in, in logistics. And um, the education sector also, uh, because of the reforms that we've been doing, yeah. <laughs> the start, stop, start, stop. Mm -hmm. And even now we are still debating as to where we're going. Mm. Um, it's in a bit of a fluid situation until we settle okay. on what we're going to do. So I think um, given that what happens in other parts of the world impacts us, that overall distress in the economy and the drop mm -hmm. in the performance of the economy somehow impacts okay. all of us. But there are some sectors which, as I've indicated, manufacturing uh, also has been impacted because of the high cost of the inputs. And that is something that is going to be a challenge in the foreseeable short run. All right. Let's talk about now about the new government that we have and they have an economic model of the bottom-up approach and I'm keen to know how are you know the employers really um, positioning themselves in the implementation of this transformation agenda within this particular period of this particular government uh, what are what are you positioning yourself as we have come up with um, our employers mm -hmm. uh, manifesto mm -hmm. the employers business agenda mm -hmm. 2022 up to 2027 yeah. that has factored in what the Kenya Kwanzaa government has indicated as their priorities yeah. and those priorities by and large really resonate with some of the priorities mm -hmm. that employers have and at the heart of it mm -hmm. is their wish mm -hmm. to improve the lives and the livelihoods of the ordinary person yeah. to improve that to avail uh, affordable services whether it's medical, whether it's education, whether it's housing, whether it's pension. And that highlights what we realized during the pandemic as a soft underbelly for Kenya and the rest of the developing world in that we did not have a viable social protection, mm -hmm. universal social protection system that looks at people who are out of work, people yeah. who have been injured, that looks at pension, that looks at medical, and all these social services. Mm -hmm. And I think that resonates uh, with employers. And at the heart of it is the issue of jobs, mm -hmm. and jobs, and the creation of jobs. Absolutely. Jobs are created by enterprises. Yeah. And uh, that makes it necessary for us to have a conversation with government about how to finance the normal ideas that the government has whether it's affordable housing, whether it's pension, whether it's uh, medical cover and uh, universal health cover. Mm -hmm. And we still need to find a good place to have that conversation, okay. to be able to <laughs> hear one another and see what it is employers are saying, mm. because we support the idea, but the financing structure really needs to arrive at a solution that doesn't hurt workers, doesn't hurt employers, yeah. and doesn't hurt the government helps the government achieve the objective, yeah. a win-win solution, which requires social dialogue. So in our employer's manifesto, we've pushed for social dialogue to be enhanced. We've pushed for the labor sector to be prioritized. Okay. Because as a country, we've not really invested mm -hmm. in the labor and social sector okay. because we are not often seen as a priority. 
But if there's anything that COVID-19 showed is when we decided that people should stay at home. And we saw the economy grind to a halt. There were yeah. no workers. There were no enterprises. And that is what drives the economy. So we're really looking forward to having a conversation with government about yeah. how we can support our enterprises to recover or to begin to recover because we know the economic indicators will not support a speedy recovery, but at least to be able to be on a growth path as a country mm -hmm. so that we can be able to have some money to put into some of the proposals by the government, but also be able to plow back as employers. So the, the agenda of reform, the agenda of reducing inequalities between the poor and the rich, which is at the heart of the, the hustler narrative, I think is a good idea. But how to realize it is uh, we have to look at models that have worked in other parts of the world. And we have to look really at how to strengthen the SMEs, which are the bulk of the Kenyan economy. If you look at where Kenyans are, yeah. they're either in the informal economy or in the SME. So how do we strengthen these ones to be able to support the formal sector, which is fairly small and is actually reducing in size, to be able to grow the informal and the SMEs so that uh, they can share the load that is currently being thrown uh, purely on the formal economy. And alongside the universal uh, social protection are issues of productivity, which we need to enhance. We need to look at skill levels, which is our agenda, because you need the skills yeah. in the right sectors, yeah. in the numbers that mm -hmm. are required yeah. uh, to be able to inform this. So employers are very specific mm -hmm. areas and issues that we'd want to engage government on okay. as soon as the CSS settle into office mm -hmm. to be able to craft uh, a way forward that we'll see a win-win okay. by all the all the stakeholders. Very true. You've spoken about something I wanted to ask you about when it comes to matters of skill sets. And you're sitting at a seat where you <laughs> listen to employers. And I wanted to ask you, um, I know this is putting you on the spot, how do you rate the skill sets of Kenyans in general? Um, you know, sometimes we have boasted ourselves as being the people who export skill sets outside, but I would want to hear where the latest is. With the fact that you have said as well that there's now a lot of, uh, we are evolving, there's a lot of technology that we have seen, especially during that COVID season, that's why the IT sector did well. So there's a lot of evolving that is happening in this particular sector. So I wanted to uh, just shed some light on our skill sets and how employee, employers are, are really coping with this. Kenyans on the whole have very, very strong uh, skill sets. Wow. We are very well trained. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Our work ethics is positive. And if you go around the region, if you look at the hotel industry, you'll find Kenyans there. Uh, there are Kenyans all over the, the world doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very driven people. <laughs> we push for excellence. So <laughs> in fact, that causes fear yeah. uh, in the nations around us mm -hmm. because Kenyans could easily take up uh, all the positions. So, we, so, we, we, so the region is concerned. <laughs> there has been some quiet concern as we speak okay. about to our sister organizations, other employers' bodies in the East Africa region in yeah. particular, uh, there's a bit of an ease. It's not <laughs> stated openly, but there's an ease. Okay. But I think it's been surprising that when you look at when the World Bank used to do it, mm -hmm. the um, indicators yeah. or the ease of doing business, there was something about attitude. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure what that means, mm -hmm. but there was an issue about attitudes among Kenyans. But yeah. in terms of skills, uh, we're doing very well. Perhaps within the Kenyan economy, we have overproduced in some areas mm -hmm. where we have not matched the skills that we produce with the needs okay. of the labor market. That has been the challenge. Mm -hmm. So you get some very highly qualified people who have degrees or master's degrees, sometimes even PhDs, applying for low level roles because mm -hmm. there are no jobs at the higher level. So they push those who have lower qualifications and lower skills out of the jobs they should be occupying. Mm -hmm. So that is underemployment. There's a lot of underemployment in Kenya where people who could do uh, slightly more complicated, more senior labor roles are sitting in junior labor roles. And we also um, overlooked mm -hmm. the TIVET, which mm -hmm. we are now in overdrive mode trying to catch up on mm -hmm. to produce uh, these middle level skills mm -hmm. that we had overlooked for a while. So there is need for a study, which FK has done, but we need to do more uh, to have enough data okay. to inform decisions on which skills 
are in short supply, we do some skills forecasting. What will be the need in the economy in the next three, four years? Which skills will we need? If you're talking about digitization, then what specific skills in that technology-driven world should we be developing now and encouraging our young to take on so that they have skills that are in demand. Right. So that's where the challenge is, okay. the mismatch between what's coming out of the learning institutions mm -hmm. and the skills that our young people, who are brilliant and perform very well, yeah. have. Uh, we will have another conversation about the current generation. I have had employers saying there is a special generation that is coming up that needs a lot of work. But anyway, that's the conversation for another time. Yes. As we come to the closing of this conversation, I'd like to know what's in your plate as the voice of employers in the next five to ten years? We have our work cut out for us. Mm -hmm. First and foremost is really just to put employers and business on a recovery path. Okay. To be able to have stability in the legal and regulatory environment uh, so that we can plan. It's very difficult for business to plan if all sorts of laws and taxations and proposals are coming their way. And that happens mm -hmm. uh, with the new government. They have to do that. So we're looking for that to stabilize and for us to begin to have conversations mm -hmm. with the relevant ministries on where our pain points are, on the proposals we have to deal with some of the crises that we have and the issues where we have an, uh, an ampus, a logjam, some may be in court, but we think there are proposals on how this can be handled. So stabilizing uh, the environment in which business is done is very important. Mm -hmm. Looking at the cost of doing business, the cost of labor, looking at productivity, because Kenya's productivity is actually quite low. Mm -hmm. When you compare us to economies like South Africa and Egypt, our labor productivity is about half of what the rest of these economies have. Mm -hmm. That has an impact because Every day the unions push for better terms and conditions of service. Where there's no union, the employees expect that. Absolutely. How do you do that if you're not uh, making uh, profit as an employer to mm. those levels? We're looking at the regulatory burden that employers have and the multiplicity of taxes, the levels of taxes that we have. In the West, if you pay taxes at the level that we do, 40%, mm -hmm. 50%, in fact, w it is our estimation that at the end of the day, we pay about 50%, 60% of our incomes, because it depends on what you're calling it, whether right. it's NHI NHIF, whether it's income tax, whether yeah. it's a corporate tax, mm -hmm. it's all tax. Yeah. So if you pay that level of tax, then you expect that the social services, the public amenities, like transport, like health, will function. Yeah. And the government then takes responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. You don't expect the government to then come back and say, can you finance NHIF? Mm -hmm. Can you finance you know, uh, pension? Yeah. Pension you can if it's your money and it's invested and it grows for you. So how do we have a conversation about putting these tax levels at a rate that gives government the revenues it needs, but also allows business to plow back. So that stability is very important. The competitiveness of our enterprises mm. um, is another issue of concern for us because we're in a global market. Okay. We compete with economies that perhaps are performing better than we are, mm -hmm. that have better stability. In the East Africa region, for instance, Kenya's minimum wage is the highest. It may not look like much to someone who's earning 15,000 shillings, yeah. but if in Uganda it's 5,000. You're not competitive. Yeah. Or they don't even review it. They just leave it <laughs> to the free forces of the market. Yeah. So uh, that's in our agenda. But as an employer's federation, we also want to grow. We want to see all the enterprises that are not within our membership join our membership so we have a strong voice and be able to play a greater role mm. in Africa's integra integration, okay. in what is um, envisaged under the continental free trade area agreement yeah. as Africa doing more with herself mm -hmm. and for herself. We'd like to be at the center of that conversation. We already are, but we'd like to do more in that arena and to, to be able then to go to the table as employers in Kenya, fully united behind uh, the Federation of Kenya Employers. All right. I have to ask you this. What do I do to be a member? <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to become a member. You uh -huh. just show an interest in becoming a member. You have to indicate that you're registered to yes. do business in Kenya. Okay. Because we deal with registered lawful businesses yeah. and you're in. <laughs> there you have it. That's our time, unfortunately. We have to edit there. 
And there you have it, uh, speaking to Jacqueline Mugu, the Executive Director and CEO, right here at the Federation of Kenyan Employers. And really speaking about what they are looking forward to in their often and even the milestones that they have achieved. Really, we need to take care of everybody in this particular sector, from the employees as well as the employers. Thank you so much for your time. I leave you right now with the market. <laughs>